Two months ago we started a new experiment in the Twinscape series. This time we are comparing a low budget setup versus a high budget setup, just to see how big the difference in plant growth will actually be. Both tanks are the same size, but the high budget tank has a very powerful light, an external filter, pressurized CO2 and an aquasol as a substrate. Total cost 484 euros or 547 dollars. The low budget tank has a very cheap light, an internal filter, DIY CO2 made with yeast and sugar, and for the substrate we're using pond soil capped with dirt. Total cost 107 euros or 121 dollars. The last update was about a month ago, and at that time both tanks had some pretty bad algae issues. It was kind of my own fault because I had to be away from home for a few days, and I should have done a big water change before that. In this situation I prefer to just trim the plants short and let them grow back healthy and without algae, rather than try and treat the algae issues with some chemicals or something. It's important to note that both tanks were trimmed on the same day and had the same amount of time to grow back again. Now let's see how they're looking today. And I'm so excited to show you guys how these tanks are looking right now. So it's been one month since the last update, uh, one month since we trimmed everything very short. And since then I've been keeping up with water changes, I've been dosing liquid fertilizers regularly. Of course, equal amounts in both tanks. And yeah, they're looking much better right now. But what we didn't do in the last update is check the water parameters. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Very curious to see what are the differences in nitrate and phosphate levels in both tanks. But yeah, let's take a look at the tanks. All right, here we go. So on the right side, we have the low budget tank. And on the left side, we have the high budget tank. So we'll do the same as always. First, we're going to look at each tank separately, kind of take a closer look. And after that, we'll do a, like a split screen and then we compare the individual plant growth like side by side. If you look at them like from a distance, I think we can all agree that the low budget tank actually looks a bit fuller. Like it has you know, more plants closer to the water surface, which I think nobody really expected. So let's start with the low budget tank. Okay, so I'll overlay again a clip from how we left it one month ago after the trimming session and then see how it's looking right now, see the differences. And I think yeah, the difference is quite, uh, quite crazy. So even though this is not really in like an aquascape aquarium, it's just a tank with some plants in there. I still think it looks really good. Like it's nice and colorful. Plants looking super healthy. I mean, I literally don't see any algae in here. And yeah, it's just, it just looks good. So we have a nice carpet of Monte Carlo now. The marshal layers kind of started to mix in with the Monte Carlo, which you know, is kind of what I wanted. But strangely enough, it's only growing like from left to right. It's not really going more towards the back. So we only have like a few sprigs here exactly on the front. Uh, other than that, the, uh, the Alternantera Reineke Mini, that's the red plant, looking really, really good. Still a nice red color, even though we have a budget light in here. So that's nice to see. Um, I switched to a different diffuser as well for the CO2. Uh, before that I was using like a smaller one, I think it was from Aquario, but it was giving me a few really large bubbles, so I switched to this one. Um, what else? Uh, the Pina Tefida is going quite tall. So I think we're going to trim that one again. I think we'll do another trimming session after uh, after we're done with this video. Um, towards the back we have the Rotala, Rotala orange juice. That one is still struggling a little bit. Like it was already struggling um, on, during the last update, but it's still not really growing that well, especially if we compare it to the, to the high budget tank in a minute. Then, yeah, the mid-ground is full with the um, Micronthemum umbrosum. That one has definitely grown a lot since the previous update. And on the right side, we have, of course, the Ludwigia repens, which is again starting to grow out of the water. Really nice. And the floating plants, the Philanthus fluitans, has you know, multiplied quite a bit as well. So I think we need to remove some of that because it's, you know, it's blocking the light and we already have a not that strong light in here. Moving over to our high budget tank. I think the first thing that kind of stands out is the, uh, the algae on the glass here. So we have a bit of a green dust algae problem in here. I'm not sure why, so I think we're going to figure that out later on when we do the water testing. Um, let's talk about the plants in there for a minute. So we have a nice carpet of Monte Carlo in here as well, but it's a lot thicker in here compared to the low budget tank. Uh, Marsleia Hezuta is also starting to mix in nicely with the carpet. The Alternantera Reineke Mini, the red plant here is doing well. It's growing quite tall in there. Uh, Pinot Fida is growing quite tall as well. And then that's what I meant about the Rotala orange juice. So it's looking a lot better in here. It actually has a bit of an orange pinkish color in here. Um, a lot taller as well. And then what's not as tall is the Minecrantum umbrosum here in the middle. So if you compare that to the, the low budget tank, there's uh, 
quite a big difference. On the right we have the Ludwiger Ripens, also here it's growing out of the water. And then all the way on the right we have the Blixa Japonica, which is hasn't really grown much, I think, since the last update. Alright, so that was just a quick look at both things. Now let's put them side by side. Let's do a split screen and talk about the individual plant growth. Okay, so starting in front, of course, with the Monte Carlo. Like I already said, like we have a much thicker carpet in the high budget tank. Um, of course, that means the plants are growing faster in there. It also means we have more maintenance so that the carpet in the high budget tank definitely needs to be trimmed. In the low budget tank, I think it's still okay. It doesn't need to be trimmed. Me personally, I actually like the carpet in the low budget tank a lot more. I like to have a nice thin carpet. I'm not a, big, I'm not a big fan of these thick carpets. But yeah, moving over to the Marsalea. So I think there's not really a big difference there. Uh, maybe there's a bit more growth in the low budget tank or maybe that's just because it's a bit more compact in the high budget tank but yeah not really not really a big difference there to be honest uh, moving over to the the red plant that alternantera reniki mini yeah it's a bit strange i mean in the low budget tank it's more compact um, we have really have a, like a, a bush of, of alternantera in the high budget tank is growing a lot taller, so we have a lot more space between each node of the plant, between each leaf. I think the Alternatera looks better in the low budget tank, which I definitely did not expect. The next plant, the Hygrophila pinnatifida, I think there's very little difference between the two. They're both grown, grown quite tall, and they both definitely need a trim. Yeah, I'm not really seeing a big difference there. Maybe in the, uh, in the low budget tank the leaves are a bit more yellow. I think in the high budget tank the leaves are a bit more vibrant and green. Then behind the Pinatifida we have the uh, Rotala orange juice. So this one is looking better in the high budget tank, even though it's kind of hidden behind the, uh, the Pinatifida and the Alternatera. In the low budget tank it's still kind of yeah, a, bit a bit struggling a bit in my opinion. Like there's three stems that sort of look well developed, but the rest is kind of just uh, hasn't really grown much at all since the, uh, the trimming session. Then moving over to, I guess, the fastest grower in the low budget tank, the Micranthemum umbrosum. So we really have a dense bush over there. We also have a dense bush in the high budget tank, but it's a bit more, it's a bit lower. And also, I think in the high budget tank, the, the leaves look much more vibrant and green. Could also be just the light, but I think, no, I think it definitely looks more vibrant green over there. And there's less space between each, each leaf, between each node, basically. So I, I personally like the Ambrosum better in the high budget tank. Then all the way on the right, of course, the Ludwig Air Repens. Yeah, honestly, not a very big difference there. And the last plant on the right side is the Blixa Japonica. It's a bit hard to see because it's kind of been, yeah, all the plants are kind of taking over the space there. But um, overall, there's not really a big difference between the two. Then there is one more plant which we haven't talked about yet at all. That's the Nessea Pericalata. That's the, the yellow plant in the middle. So in the high budget tank, it's actually doing much better than in the low budget tank. Um, in the high budget tank, it's kind of starting to uh, get swallowed up by the Micranthemum, but uh, the new leaves are looking very healthy in there. There's definitely a lot of new growth. And in the low budget tank, it's not really growing and the new leaves are sort of like crumpled. So it's not doing very well in there. I'm not sure why that is, but maybe we'll figure out by the, uh, the water test in a minute. So yeah, very interesting uh, results if you ask me. And to be honest with you, if I have to choose one thing right now, I'm definitely going for the low budget tank. I think it just looks much better. Uh, also definitely did not expect that. I think it's because the, the high budget tank has some, some algae issues right now with the green nest algae. So I think the reason why we still have some algae in the high budget tank is probably just a combination of excess nutrients and strong light. But we'll figure that out when we do the water tests. Um, but I want to talk about the, the lights for a little bit because both lights are still on for 8 hours. In the high budget tank, we have the Skylight AQI 40, which has a total output of uh, 1800 lumens. Well, lumens is just how bright the light is. So 1800 lumens here, it's only running on 70%, so let's say 1250 lumens, something like that. Low budget tank has the Twinstar 13B, which has doesn't have a dimmer, so it's on full power, which is, I think, six or seven, 700 lumens, yeah, 700 lumens. So the high budget tank almost has double the amount of lumens and I think that's why some plants in here are growing a bit more compact. So there's less space between each plant leaf, each node basically. So what I want to do next for the next few weeks after this update, I want to increase the photo period of the high budget tank to let's say 10 hours. So two more hours for the high budget tank 
but keep this one still on eight hours. I want to see if that's going to make a difference in, in plant growth there. Maybe the plants will grow a bit more compact as well. I think that will be interesting to see. All right, so this is my test kit. So let's see, I'm pH, KH, GH. That's not really important because both things are running on tap water, so they'll be very, very similar. Uh, CI, I forgot what that is. We're going to be testing FE, that's the iron content. Uh, nitrite, that's not really important. This one is important. NO3, that's the nitrates. So we're going to measure that. Ammonia is not really important either. The last one, PO4, that's the phosphate. So we're going to test the iron, nitrates and phosphates. That's the three tests that we're going to do. All right, that's our low budget tank. So we have iron, phosphate, nitrate. So starting with the iron, I think we are at about 0 0.5 milligrams per liter, which is, yeah, that's quite fine. Nothing special about that. Uh, moving over to the phosphate. So the phosphate you can see is quite dark. According to the test, it's two milligrams per liter, maybe even more than that because it's quite dark. So our phosphate levels are very high. Honestly, I'm not really sure why that is. Maybe it's coming from the, from the pond soil. And then lastly, the nitrate, which is very, very light yellow, which basically means we have close to zero, uh, zero milligram per liter. So we have almost no nitrate in the water, which is also a little bit surprising. So still considering the fact that we have root taps in the substrate, we have pond soil and we're dosing liquid fertilizer at least once per week. But I guess that uh, the plants are soaking up all the nitrate. Well, I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, yeah, that looks pretty much exactly the same like the, uh, the low budget thing. So I thought we would see some differences, but you know, the iron looks exactly the same color. Maybe the phosphate is maybe a little bit dark even. But again, very little nitrates. So I thought the nitrates would be higher. And that's why we had the, the, had the green dust algae in the, uh, the high budget tank. But yeah, it doesn't, it, that wouldn't really make sense because both things are getting the exact same amount of liquid fertilizer. So yeah, I guess it's to be expected that they both look exactly the same. I guess it's also sort of some sort of confirmation that our low budget substrate is working just as well as our high budget substrate, our aqua soil. Okay, so where do we go from here? For sure, in the high budget tank, we need to fix that algae issue with the greenhouse algae. So maybe the light is just a bit too strong. Uh, I don't want to dim it, so I'm thinking to add some floating plants from the low budget tank to the high budget tank, because in the high budget tank, we don't really have that many floating plants. Somehow they're doing better in the low budget tank. So maybe by adding some floating plants that can reduce the light intensity a little bit, soak up some of those excess phosphates, I guess, and maybe that will help with the green dust algae. So in the low budget tank, I will increase the photo period from eight hours to 10 hours. See if those two extra hours are gonna give us, yeah, some more intense plant growth, some more intense colors, some bit more compact growth as well. I'll be curious to see uh, if that makes a big difference or not. And I think both tanks are also gonna get a, another trimming session. So I'll cut both things completely short again and besides this plant in the middle, the yellow one, the Nessia pedicalata golden, that one I will not trim, and also the Blixa on the right there. It would be nice if we can get some more growth from the Blixa. Uh, those two plants will not get trimmed because yeah, they're super slow growing and I don't want to trim them. But everything else will, uh, everything else will get trimmed. So that's it for this update on the high budget versus low budget experiment. Guys, let me know in the comments which tank is your favorite. I think I already know the answer, but still curious to know. Don't forget to smash the like button and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.